Today's video is sponsored by Pickers Grip. Stop dropped picks and pick rotation while playing with Pickers Grip. Made with all natural ingredients in Virginia. Check out their website to order. When you support my sponsor, this also supports my channel and it's very much appreciated. That's right, plenty of us are cooped up here inside the house on quarantine. So that means plenty of people have way too much time on their hands. What that means for this channel is that it is now time for another episode of Know Your Troll. Know Your Troll. If you are new to this channel and or if you are new to this video series, think about how stupid the average person is. This is a video series designed to remind us that half of them are dumber than that. This one from David Murray Holland. I will intentionally avoid your channel and content forever. Great. Thanks for checking out my channel. Glad you enjoyed it. No explanation, no complaints. Just that first and last thing I've ever heard from that guy. DMR Productions says, The Piranha is real dog shit. I happen to like the piranha for, you know, the, the PV piranha, uh, 6505 piranha is what you're referring to. And that particular uh, amp, you know, for what, 160 bucks or 75 bucks or whatever that thing costs, you know, I mean, it, you know, 20 watts, two preamp, you know, effects loop, uh, small, compact, comes with a gig bag, you know, sounds pretty decent. I mean, you know, what's not to like? You know, if you don't like the way it sounds, try running it through a different speaker cabinet. Uh, or if you don't like it, don't buy it. I happen to like it. Alexander Barnes says, is Picker's Grip really worth it? Uh, of course Picker's Grip is really worth it. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's certainly affordable enough. I mean, what is it like? I think it's like $9.99. It's like, you know, 10 bucks or something. Uh, regular price. You know, I mean, I, I keep, you know, I keep one on hand. Uh, pretty, pretty regularly, you know, I don't, uh, you know, do I use every time I pick up, a, every time I sit down to play guitar? No, but, uh, you know, there are times that I do reach for it and, you know, it does give me more control over my pick and more control over, uh, my playing and it does exactly as it's advertised to do exactly what it says it's going to do. And, you know, and further, furthermore, you know, Billy Cox, uh, who is the founder and, uh, CEO, I believe it's his title, uh, and creator of Pickers Grip, Billy's a fantastic guy. Anthony Baltusa says, Guitar Center finances were already on shaky ground before the virus. Do you think they can survive this disaster? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. And the reason why is because Guitar Center finances are probably not quite as bad as you think they are. Uh, believe it or not, you know they were they actually had a had a, uh, a a pretty profitable year in 2018. And Moody's, who is the company that gives out all the the, the corporate credit ratings for you know a very condensed explanation of who moody's are um you know in 2018 or i'm sorry the beginning of 2019 because guitar center had such a strong 2018 moody's actually upgraded guitar center's credit rating to stable and prior to that every, you know the rest of the world had had them written off as you know dead to rights and you know with a horrible credit rating etc cetera, etc cetera. now here in the beginning of 2020 their credit rating has since been downgraded however the reason why it was downgraded, the only reason it was downgraded, because 2019 was actually an even more profitable year for Guitar Center than 2018 was. Now, the reason why Moody's downgraded their credit rating again here recently is because Guitar Center did not allocate as much of those profits toward their debt as Moody's would have liked to have seen them do. That is the only reason. That is the only reason why. So do I think Guitar Center is going to survive uh, the this pandemic? Uh, yes, it's going to be rough, just like it's going to be rough for everybody. But do I think they're going to survive? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Hey. Captain America says, Wow, are all guitar reviewers fat and or bald? You got Shane, Philip McKnight, Agnesi, and this guy. Well, you know, I've got a quite a bit of respect for every one of those people that you just mentioned, so I am going to take that as a compliment. Thank you very much. This one is from Fiendfather. Hey, sounds great. How do you like that Charvel Desolation? They're cheap price-wise, but I'm a Charvel fan and have an American SoCal that is my baby. I was wondering if you find it to be decent for the price. I have a low-end checker that is a beast for... For three hundred, for three fifty, four hundred dollars new, and wonder if it's comparable. Uh, the Desolation series that I have, 
which uh, it's actually not in this room at the moment. It's out at my desk. But uh, the the Charvel Desolation series that I have, you know, that that guitar catches a lot of attention from viewers on this channel. Uh, you know, because I think mostly just because it's a it's a really really nice looking guitar. Uh, that said, it was 650 bucks brand new, and it was a lot of guitar for the money. And I say was because, for whatever reason, Charvel only made those that series, you know, the Desolation series, for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden, they discontinued them out of nowhere. And I can't figure out for the life of me why, because they seem to be pretty popular. You know, not, not only they seem to be pretty popular, but like I said, you know, particularly the, uh, you know, the top, the top of the line, which is, uh, you know, the one that I have. Uh, the Desolation series ranges from about, it, when they were new anyway, from I think about the 250 range up to about the $700 range. Uh, but like I said, they were a lot of money for the guitar. And, you know, with mine, you know, the, the top end of the, of the line, you know, for 650 bucks, 700 bucks, you know, you got a, you know, actual legitimate, you know, neck through body construction, you know, actual, you know, American made active EMG pickups, uh, locking tuners, uh, abalone binding, you know, a really, really nice flame top. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot a lot of things really really you know nice appointments to that guitar that you don't see in that price range especially now nowadays. Um, so I don't know why Charvel discontinued them, but I'm sure glad that I got one that I was able to grab one when I did. As far as how that compares to uh, to the Schecters, uh, you know, Schecters I've said for a long long time Schecters are probably about the uh, the best value you know the best guitar bang for your buck across their entire line uh that you can get you know you spend this guitar which i have used which i uh, just got here in the last few months i have shown off quite a bit on my channel uh it's gotten a lot of use this is a schecter cr6 uh this guitar runs brand new for 6.99 if you wait for the right sale they were just you know you can get it cheaper than that i think guitar center just recently had them on sale for 5.79 or something you know not not an expensive guitar at all but uh you know not cheap but not you know not not certainly not super super duper expensive and uh you know it has performed and played and sounded as well as any fifteen hundred dollar american made super strat that i've ever gotten my hands on so uh how that how my how the charvel desolation my in any way compares to these you know it's right up there with it quality wise so I would say here about a year ago, I had a uh, a viewer whose username is uh, Don R comment on uh, my channel, and she actually made an appearance in the Know Your Troll series, probably against her will, and uh, she had some not so pleasant things to say about me uh, at that time. She actually reached back out and commented again. This is what she said recently. Robert, I am so sorry, and I'm hu and I humbly apologize, but I did mercilessly post a nasty comment on one of your pedal reviews. You came back at me hard, and I quote unquote saw the light, and realized how I can really hurt someone by commenting something really stupid. Felt really bad and deleted the comment. So sorry, Robert, but you made me see the light. I think that you are really a wonderful person. It's been an honor and a pleasure to subscribe to your channel. I only wish you the best, and thanks for your quote unquote tough love in dealing with me. Now, a very at-peace ex-troll. Thank you very much, Dawn, for taking the time and, uh, you know, and, and actually you know, publicly apologizing like that. That never happens. So, thank you very much. You have earned my respect. Uh, again, that is, you know, most people don't do that. So... Uh, that said, everybody, go check out Dawn's channel. Uh, I'll uh, I'll even post a link to a uh, link down in the description to her channel. She uh, she has a, a small audience that she uh, you know seems to be trying to build, and uh, you know she, her genre is a, is a little bit different from mine. It's not necessarily a guitar channel, uh, but you know there are there is some interesting stuff on there. I actually watched a video today about uh, you know there was a poem. Uh, a poem written by her that uh, seemed like it came from some personal experience that I thought was uh, was very heartwarming. So, go check out Dawn R's channel. Dark Side of the Moon comments, Gibson Law Offices is their new name. <laughs> I suppose it very well could be. <laughs> Hey, my friend, Gear, my friend Alan Barnes from Geargasms commented, said, love the vid as always. You're in my video today, superstar. Uh, and as it turned out, I sure was in his video that very day. This was from last Friday as of this recording, I believe. Alan's videos always go up on Fridays. 
that video was about uh, smaller YouTube channels that he really enjoys that uh, he was uh, wanting to plug and hopefully drive some more traffic towards and uh you know his channel certainly could be you know is and was <laughs> uh was in that particular category but he was also he was kind enough to include my channel so uh if you like this channel if you like what i do if you like stupid jokes uh like i tell and uh you know all the you know crazy guitar gear and stuff go check out geargasms uh because if you like this channel chances are you will probably like his channel as well Dostradamus says, got ripped off a lot in the 80s and 90s by unscrupulous shop owners and hard to get price data. Prices are very level now. If things, if they go, things are going to get weird. Uh, you are referring to uh, the video that I did recently on why I still love Guitar Center. And uh, I have been saying this, you know, long before that video. Uh, Guitar Center, I, you know, a video that I did on Guitar Center a long time ago, one point that I was making in that video was, you know, Guitar Center has leveled the playing field, uh, you know, to specifically to prevent against situations like this. You know, a lot of, you know, there was, there was a lot of shady shop owners, uh, particularly back in the 80s and 90s that were getting away with murder. And there's no way they'd be able to get away with them today uh, just because of Guitar Center's presence on the market, you know, and, and, you know, and because of Guitar Center's presence, of course, you know, now we're also talking about, uh, you know, Sam Ash and Sweetwater and, you know, now all the big retailers, you know, who now, you know, we can find out the price on anything by going to any one of those websites, assuming they carry it because they're all, they're all the same. Uh, so yeah, I agree. That's a point I've been trying to make for a long time. Not all shop owners were that way, though. Once upon a time here in the Indianapolis area, there was a uh, there was a, a private-owned guitar shop called Guitars and More, uh, who was owned by my friend Dean Naku. And uh, Dean is about one of the most stand-up guys I've ever met, uh, particularly in the MI business. And you know, after he uh, he closed down his shop, he's still very he's still really active buying and trading stuff on the uh, on the used market, uh, even though he doesn't have a storefront of his own anymore. Uh, you know, so he's still really active. And so after, after he actually closed down his retail location, he came in and, uh, you know, he and I got to become really, really good friends because he bought a lot of stuff from me, uh, during my days at Guitar Center. And, uh, you know, he was one of the very, one of the very few people that would come in to me with a, you know, with a piece of used gear wanting to sell it. And, you know, he would say, you know, these, you know, this is, he, it's, you know, he said, this is kind of an oddball piece. You don't see these very often. You know, they tend to sell for about this much. You know, I've seen on the, you know, based on experience, uh, you know, it'll take you a little while to sell it, but you'll get it. But he would be as honest as he possibly could and tell me everything that I absolutely needed to know uh, before writing him a check for, uh, for, a you know, a, an oddball piece of used gear. So, you know, so Dean's an example. There are some great uh, small mom and pop guitar shop owners out there, but they did have a reputation for taking advantage of people quite a bit, uh, particularly back in the era that you mentioned. Guitar Hellion says, You're a fat bastard, Ooh. Robert. And I got a feeling you're a troll with a small penis, Guitar Hellion. Speaking of trolls, the last episode of Know Your Troll that I did was uh, a an episode dedicated almost entirely to my troll doppelganger that likes to make appearances on other uh, other guitar channels videos uh, and uh, live streams and things of that nature. You know his his uh, you know the name of that channel is of course called Robert's Guitar Dungeon and he was even kind enough to steal my profile picture. So uh, without clicking on his channel to go see that there is no content and no subscribers or any of that stuff, it looks just like me. You know, and uh, he has made his presence felt on uh, the likes on the live streams here recently by the likes of the Tone King and Phil McKnight and uh, 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 most recently Pete Thorne. So you know, of course, he said some really really. Uh, nasty and inappropriate things to Pete on his live stream, to which Pete fired back and told him, uh, you know, and uh, exactly what he thought, and you know, didn't mince any words. Uh, and of course, you know, thinking it was directed at me, just like you know, which I don't blame him for. I would have done the same thing. Somebody who was uh, who was viewing that particular live stream sent me a message and told me what was going on. I so I went in there and uh, you know apologized and well, not apologized, but you know said you know whatever was said. I, I assure you it was not me. Uh, you know this you know I don't do those kinds of things. You know Pete Thorne's one of my favorite one of my favorite guitar guys on YouTube. I got nothing but respect for him. Uh, you know and then again commented 
on the uh, the video that posted after the fact. Uh, you know, Pete was kind enough to respond back and uh, acknowledge that uh, this whole particular situation is, in fact, a huge pain in my ass. And <laughs> the following week on his live stream, you know, I, I had uh, said something and asked him about a you know a, you know there was a question about his uh, live rig that he was using in another video that he posted earlier in the week and uh you know he recognized me he remembered uh, the the screen name anyway and not only was kind enough to uh, acknowledge the fact that uh the person that left the nasty comments the week prior was a uh, was an imposter uh but uh you know i had some really nice things to say about me which i was very humbled by and suggested that uh, all of his viewers go and subscribe to my channel you know it was a very 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 cool thing of him to do uh, that he certainly didn't have to so pete if you see this thank you very much uh one of those new subscribers is a, a man by who goes by harley hex and he says a funny video definitely I can help shed some light on the body shape of the Kramer Gorky Park guitar. The, the body shape is the shape of the Russian balalaika, which is a three-string folk instrument. The reverse flying V. Too funny. I guess that is what happens when you let people drink beer on the job. Even funnier, one of those is hanging on the wall of my local guitar shop and has been there ever since he opened the store 10 years ago. That tells you how desirable they are. <laughs> Uh, and re the, the reverse flying V joke probably has been commented on more than anything else on this channel. <laughs> However, that said, Samurai Guitarist has a reverse flying V and he loves that thing. So I strongly suggest you, you uh, go hit up his channel and let him know exactly where that reverse flying V is, is hanging up just in case he might be looking for another one. You know, that might be an opportunity for him to get a good deal on it. The other thing that is often commented on in that video is the, uh, the Kramer... Gorky Park guitar, which looks like a great big giant Dorito. It's ridiculous. Uh, but I've since learned, since doing that video, that uh, there is a Russian, you know, because it's a Russian themed guitar, uh, there is a Russian folk instrument called a balalaika. And that guitar is meant to mimic a balalaika, which is what Harley Hex is referring to. So, Harley, welcome to the family. Thank you for subscribing. Hope to see more of you. This one comes from Jim Herleva. So as from my experience, the 70s guitars get a bad rap. I have a 77 Custom Fretless Wonder and a 76 Deluxe. Aside from the 59 Custom Shop, I also have the two 70s models are far better than my 05 Standard and my 2012 Traditional. An Artisan is next on my list and has been for a number of years. Why are the 70s Les Pauls looked down upon? It's not necessarily the 70s Les Pauls. It's, you know, 70s Gibsons in general. Uh, unfortunately, in 1968, if you're not familiar with the history, you know, in 1968, they were bought out by a corporation called Norlin. Uh, Norlin, unfortunately, were not musicians. They were not guitar makers. Uh, you know, really, they had no business getting into the guitar industry, in my opinion. You know, however, that was the new ownership uh, after the Ted McCarty era, and uh, they, they, they cut a lot of corners. You know, they started, you know, SGs, you, could, you know, you can, still, you can see today, especially now as, as the finishes have faded. You know, they were building, you know, started building uh, Gibson SGs with five and six and seven pieces uh, glued together instead of two. You know, they had, uh, you know, several other quality, uh, quality control issues. You know, I, I uh, you know, finish flaws and uh, binding mishaps and, uh, and I've, and I have seen more than one seventies Gibson with a crooked set in neck. Uh, you know, they definitely had some, you know, had some quality issues back then. Uh, that's not, that's not true with all of them. You know, it sounds, you know, they did make some good guitars back then. It sounds like you own a couple, uh, and there are plenty of others out there that do as well. You know, the artisans, I've never seen a bad artisan, Les Paul, that you mentioned, uh, that I also mentioned in the, uh, in that video that you commented on. Um, you know, the Les Paul Deluxes are still real popular. You know, the SGs from that era are real popular. There is, uh, you know, they, there, there was definitely good guitars to come out of that era, but the frequency with which you saw bad ones was a lot higher than it was in the 50s and 60s prior to that. Uh, as a result, on the vintage market, there is a pretty steep drop-off in value from 50s, you know, 50s and 60s Gibsons to 70s. You know, the 70s are, you know, again, there's a pretty steep drop-off there. You know, where 60s Gibsons are worth, you know, fifteen twenty thousand dollars, for example, and 70s are nowadays worth five or six. You know, and these are very. This is just that's you know these numbers are just examples. I'm not, you know, putting a value on any specific model. Uh, I'm just using that as an example. But you know, compare similar models from one era to the next and see what you find. Gibson did not do any 70s reissues at all until about 2000. Was it 2011 or so that they came out with the tribute series? 
Um, the only one I can think of prior to that was when they did the RD. Uh, they did a Silver Burst RD model as a Guitar of the Week. And uh, it was a Guitar of the Week model in 2007. Uh, and even then, they didn't call it a 70s reissue. It was just a guitar that was just an RD guitar of the week. So, you know, even for the longest time, you know, even Gibson didn't want, didn't like to acknowledge their era in the in the 70s. Uh, it was kind of, it's, it's regarded as a pretty dark period uh, for, you know, not just Gibson, but, uh, you know, Fender. That was, a, that was a rough time for Fender. That was a rough time for Martin. You know, that was the, that was the point in time when uh, a lot of the Japanese companies had finally figured out how to, how to build really, really good guitars and were cloning guitars from those other companies. So from Iron Shadow says, so I'm debating on getting a Schecter CR6 and a Schecter Reaper 6. Which one is better and which one should I get? Uh, you know, that's, that's a personal preference thing. You know, the, the Reaper, uh, the Reaper 6s actually can get, you know, the CR6, as I mentioned earlier, is... Uh, you know, those guitars are brand new or $699, uh, you know, and there's one version of it, at least uh, as, as of this recording. Uh, the Reapers, on the other hand, you know, they've got a few different versions. You can get them with or without a Floyd. You can get them, uh, get them with, uh, I think you can get them with active or passive pickups, and I think you can get them with uh, the most expensive ones will come with a Floyd and uh, a Sustaniac pickup in the neck. Uh, you know, that's the most expensive one, which is going to run you about $1,100, $1, I believe. Uh, so I'm assuming that you're talking about the lower end of that uh, of that series, which again is also 699, just like the CR6. So uh, which one should you get? Uh, you know, that's the, honestly that's up to you. You know, there I, I I don't think one is any better than the other. You know, the uh, the CR6 is a bolt-on neck, uh, which again is not necessarily you know which is not bad. Uh, you know, but uh, bolt-on necks do have a little bit different snap to the tap to the tone you know, at least in my opinion and when i bought that when i bought my cr6 i bought it you know I, one of the things i specifically wanted on that guitar was a bolt-on neck so many of my other guitars are set neck and neck through uh but, you know the cr6 is a bolt-on neck the reaper is a set neck uh the reaper i think is an ash body versus mahogany on the cr6 and uh you know a few other uh tone wood differences the pickups i believe are different and uh, you know, but both USA Schecter design, you know, Schecter made USA made pickups. But really, that's about those are about the only differences. I think they've got the same neck profile on them. I could be mistaken about that though. If I am mistaken, then the Reaper is going to have a little bit fatter neck because the CR6 has the SLS, the thin, very really thin neck profile. Regardless, whatever you decide, I don't think you're going to make a bad decision. Schecter guitars are fantastic, and I think you'd be happy with either one of them, in my opinion. So, so good luck, man. Whatever one, whatever which one you decide to go with. Now, a while back, I did a video on how to play guitar like Ace Frehley, one of my guitar heroes. And uh, as we, as this is the COVID-19 quarantine edition of Know Your Troll, for some reason, that video seems to have gained a lot of, you know, not a lot of steam, but, you know, has gotten, all of a sudden, people are starting to watch that video again out of nowhere. And, you know, with YouTube being YouTube, sometimes that happens. Uh, this comment was left on that video. From Johan Dart. Said, nope, I love Ace the most, but he wasn't the greatest musician. Musicianship is about polishing your craft. Ace was talented. He had a spark. Uh, he was like a hot girl that can stroll through life just on her looks without working on anything until her beauty fades away. I think it's Paul that was the best musician. He kept working on his craft like a pro. He created riffs upon riffs. Uh, you know, I, I'll be honest, I have always liked Ace and Paul equally, you know, to me, uh, the early era of Kiss anyway, you know, those two always went together. You know, when somebody asked me to create a list of greatest 70s rock guitar players, you know, I always include, uh, you know, names like Ted Nugent and, uh, you know, Eddie Van Halen and, uh, uh, you know, Ace and Paul go in the same line, you know. Uh, I've just always kind of viewed those two as, you know, as a tandem that, you know, one... You know, I mean, they, you know, one was not as good as, as he could, as he would have been without the other. So despite the personal differences that, uh, you know, in that band, which are well documented, you know, they were a very, very good team together. However, uh, you know, I will say that in my opinion, I think the best, uh, you know, it probably, you know, at that time, you know, the best musician, you know, at the time that, that the solo, uh, the Kiss solo albums came out, I think Ace was probably the best. But since then... Uh, while I agree with you about Paul, he is certainly still does continue to uh, you know to work and you know and improve and become a better musician overall. So while I agree with you about Paul Stanley, uh, my all-time favorite Kiss member is still Gene Simmons, 
And, uh, you know, the reason why is because, you know, of course, you, you know, he's arrogant as hell and he, I, I can't help but love him for that, <laughs> you know, for some for some strange reason. Uh, and I think I think, you know, most of his fans will agree with me about that. Uh, you know, he's also extremely intelligent, uh, you know, probably one of the most intelligent people in the business, which is one reason why they have done so well. And one thing that he doesn't really seem to get a whole lot of credit for, I never, I rarely hear anybody talk about this, but, you know, when they play live, Gene Simmons never makes a mistake. Never. You know, and some of those bass lines can get pretty intricate because they don't necessarily follow the rhythm of the guitars uh, or the drums. You know, he's kind of off doing, you know, doing his own thing on a lot of things. But, uh, you know, he knows to stay in his lane and he stays in his lane very, very well. Side note, uh, on the on his uh, Gene Simmons Kiss solo record, uh, he didn't play one note of bass on that record. He played guitar on that album. Uh, of course, there was also a myriad of guest musicians on that record as well. Uh, I believe uh, Rick Nielsen and uh, Cher, uh, uh, Diana Ross, who he was dating at the time, and... Uh, Donna Summer, I believe, were all guests. Uh, were all guests on that album, uh, but he didn't play any bass. He played guitar on that record. So, uh, Gene Simmons is actually pretty well versed in more than just one instrument. John Apollo Apollo says, Ooh. "Blah blah 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 blah." Just shut your pie hole and play. <laughs> This gem came from Kevin Griffin. So I can easily see this dude hosting a different kind of show. Robert's Rape Dungeon. <sighs> the interwebs. Matthew H. says, I have the black with the white binding and diamond inlays and I love it. Is it normal to prefer a lower action setup than the factory setup, though? Also, any idea if there's a hard showcase that fits the body type? Uh, this comment was left on a on an older video that I did uh, several years back, actually, on the BC Rich ASM Pro. And for some reason, every one of my guitars that I'm mentioning in this particular video are guitars that are not currently in this room, which is unusual. You know, the, if you're not familiar with, with the BC Rich ASM Pro, it's your basic Super Strat uh, with a pointy headstock on it. And uh, any basically any, you know, universal size electric guitar case will fit it. You know, any rectangle uh, universal electric guitar case, you know, should fit that guitar just fine. Uh, I, I did send you a link in the comments section to uh, a guitar to a case on Guitar Center's website that uh, that I have had that I know will fit it just fine that I've personally used myself. Uh, that's a good solid case. Uh, regarding the setup on it, there is a big, huge misconception with the term factory setup. And you know, people see the word setup as it relates to a guitar, and that uh, that automatically, you know, so many people out there seem to think that uh, you know they ignore the word factory before that and think that that automatically means you know ready to go. You know, what factory setup actually means is, you know, there is no way for any guitar manufacturer to know how I want my guitar set up. And there is no, there's no way for them to know that. There's no way for them to set it up uh, some way that everybody is going to love. You know, so just about every guitar manufacturer out there before they package it up and, uh, and send the guitar out the door to whichever uh, distributor or retailer it's going to, you know, they will set it up to playable specifications, you know, with intentions of needing, you know, final adjustment for the end user. You know, what that means is, you know, you pull them out, you know, pull, you know, pull a new guitar out of the box, let's say a Fender Strat, for example, uh, probably, probably going to have to tune it up a little bit, but, uh, you know, the action will be set to where you can at least get a feel for, uh, you know, get a feel for the neck. And, uh, you know, things of that nature, you know, some shops that, you know, some shops will, uh, you know, will take, will take some time. A lot of shops actually will take time and set, uh, set new guitars up, uh, to a little bit more to custom specifications, you know, other larger, uh, you know, larger stores, for example, you know, like a, you know, a guitar center, for example, uh, you know, that, you know, they have, you know, most stores are going to have 500 guitars hanging on the wall and they have one guitar tech. And, you know, they're, you know, they move a lot of volume. So, you know, the guitar tech is primarily going to be dependent on how busy he might, he or she might be with customer guitars. You know, that's, 
uh, you know, he or, you know, his or her focus from there is going to be the high end guitars and then work their way down. Sometimes, you know, quite honestly, sometimes they can get to them. Sometimes they can't, you know, but to answer your question, yes, most people will generally prefer to have the action, uh, brought down a little bit from the factory setup, uh, particularly in the case of BC Rich guitars. One thing I really, really like about the ASM Pro is it has got the probably the thinnest neck that I own, uh, definitely one of the fastest playing, and uh, that guitar, for some reason, you can get the action really, really low on that guitar, and uh, it's, it's really fast, and you know, it makes that guitar really, really fun to play. So, you know, glad to hear that you own one as well. Good luck. Mativ1 says... You should hire way better guitar player for these comparisons, dude. Uh, you are right, sir. Maybe I should. You are correct. I am not the greatest guitar player in the world. I am not even the greatest guitar player on YouTube or even close. Sorry to break your heart, dude. Uh, also, sorry about your penis, by the way. Cosmic Wizard says, Robert, you are a troll. Aw. Uh, poor Cosmic Wizard didn't like my Fuzz Factory video. <laughs> Mike G says, for how much audio equipment you have, why in the F is your audio so terrible, lol. This comment was left on a video that has nothing but dialogue in it. There's no guitar playing on that video at all, and all the dialogue you can hear just fine. So I responded with, with as much, and to which Mike G replied with... This gym. He says, probably because your headphones are as bad as your recording skills. <laughs> Oh, the interwebs. <laughs> what an asshole. Paper Chasing 23 says, The fact that you reference Slipknot makes me think that you don't know shit about heavy guitars. The fact that you can't spell the word guitars makes me think that you don't either. By the way, Slipknot are a pretty heavy band last I checked. Uh, if you don't believe me, maybe go check out Stay Metal Ray's channel because he's the biggest Slipknot fan that I know and he does quite a few videos with Slipknot themed content. Vincent James says, the, how GC determines what they'll pay you for used gear. Me, enters GC with unwarranted instrument to sell. What's the best price they'll give me? GC employee, picks up phone and dials. Hello, Rick. What do you think about this? Best you can do is how much? Okay, thanks. That sounds pretty accurate in a lot of instances. You know, if you've got a, uh, you know, a younger or more inexperienced you know, associate that, you know, may not have, uh, you know, may or may not have bought in a lot of used gear on his own. Uh, meanwhile, you know, if you walk in with, uh, you know, with a guitar that people like me have seen a zillion of, you know, like if you walk in with an Epiphone Les Paul, you know, Epiphone Les Paul standard, for example, you know, I can't tell you how many used Epiphone Les Paul standards I've seen in my career. And, you know, I can tell you right now, I'd probably, you know, if I were the one standing behind the counter, you know, I would probably be the guy that that, uh, that, that associate called, you know, picked up the phone to call and I would probably tell him to offer you about 150 bucks for it. You know, I don't know what you were bringing in or what they offered you, but, you know, that's that's how that works a lot of the time. If it's something that, uh, you know, that, that they've seen a lot of and, you know, they already know the value, they're not going to waste more of your time by looking it up on eBay and, you know, and go through all that stuff. You know, Ola England has a, a video series on his channel called Will It Chug? And recently on that uh, uh, in that video series, he featured none other than the Pepper's Pedal Satanist Distortion, which is one of my all-time favorite distortions uh, and one that I had the opportunity opportunity to demo here on my channel just last year thanks to ola's video on that pedal it uh, also you know helped to drive a few extra views to to uh, my video and the first comment from those viewers that migrated to my channel from his on that video was from zepset where he says not well dialed in sorry ola's review is less harsh more convincing <laughs> <laughs> that just that sounds to me a lot more like you just you know, you're you're you you're dying to tell me that you like Ola England more than I more than you like me and that's <laughs> oh the interwebs. Well, I ran across one more that I just had to share. As a YouTube creator, oftentimes when uh, I have a new video that goes up, I usually share it on uh, share it on. You know, all, all of my pages on Facebook, as well as in a few different uh, guitar-related Facebook groups, as those groups will allow me to do. Uh, and recently, I did a video on, as I mentioned earlier, why I still love Guitar Center. Well, that 
video. I share it in a probably the largest guitar group on Facebook that, that I believe is up around 300,000 members called Guitar Players on Facebook or something like that. And one thing that I mentioned in that video is that based on my experience, the one reason why a lot of people who complain about Guitar Center are only doing it just for the sake of doing so and are not necessarily disclosing all of the details why they, why they are upset because doing so would basically expose them as the one who was wrong well here's an exchange i had with this fine upstanding piece of humanity in uh, that particular facebook group on that very subject i'll just let you read it for yourself Dream. <sighs> Trolls aren't just on YouTube. <laughs> Neither are stupid people. So, thank you very much for taking the time to check out this video. Uh, thank you very much to Pickers Grip for being kind enough to sponsor this video. Please go check out their product. Uh, I will post links to uh, Pickers Grip down in the description where you can go and check them out. Uh, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, links, uh, any other pertinent links will be down in the description, as I mentioned. And uh, if you haven't hit the subscribe button to this channel, please consider doing so. It really, really does help out a lot. Uh, and if you do that, if you really enjoy the content here, also hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on future content. There is liable to be another one of these coming up here in the very near future, as while the entire world is under quarantine, there's a lot of people that simply just don't have anything better to do. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, everybody.